In this video, we're going to talk about how to account for an operating lease from the perspective of the lessor. So it's actually a lot simpler than when we did a finance lease from the perspective of the lessor in that you don't remove the asset from your company's books. So you're not going to be setting up a lease receivable and debiting cost of goods sold. We don't have to worry about anything because you're not getting the asset off your books. It's still as if you still own the asset. And each period, you're going to recognize lease revenue as it is earned. So if you receive the lease payment at the beginning of the period, then you're going to have some unearned revenue revenue and then as you earn it over the period then you will back it out of unearned revenue and into lease revenue and I'll show you in an example how that works now over time even though you don't remove the asset from your books you are going to depreciate the asset if it is a depreciable type of property so you'll depreciate it over its economic life which may be different than the lease term itself right so the economic life might be 20 years whereas the lease term is two years so you want to depreciate it over the asset's actual ac economic life because you haven't gotten rid of the asset. It's, it's still on your books. The nice thing with an operating lease for a lessor, you don't have to do an effective interest table. It's actually a lot simpler than when we did the finance lease for the lessor. So let's say that your company leases a truck to a lessee, to another company, for a period of three years, okay? Now your company is going to receive lease payments of $20,000 at the beginning of each year, okay? Every year, January 1st, you're gonna receive a check for $20,000. Now, the truck is expected to have a useful economic life of 10 years. So because it's a truck, it's depreciable property, we're gonna be depreciating it, not over the three years that's the lease term, but over the 10 years, which is the economic life of the asset. And then to depreciate it, we need to know what was your cost basis in the truck. So we'll just say that your cost basis uh, was $50,000 and that the salvage value of the truck is zero. We'll, we'll just use straight line depreciation uh, to, to make it simple. So. And when you get your first payment uh, on, Jan let's say, January 1st, uh, 2017, you receive your first payment. Remember, you're going to get, it's a three-year lease, so you're going to get three payments at the, on January 1st of each year. You're going to get $20,000, okay? Now, because it's day one of the lease, the, the lessee hasn't even used the asset yet, right? So they haven't done anything with the truck. So we're going to record this as unearned lease revenue. Okay, remember that's a liability. And so it's unearned revenue of $20,000. Now, on December 31st of that year, now the lessee has used that truck for an entire year. So we say, okay, we're going to reduce the unearned lease revenue account by $20,000. And then we're going to uh, credit lease revenue for 20,000. So we're just backing it out of unearned revenue and saying, okay, get it out of there and let's move it to this lease revenue account because now the revenue has been earned, right? So th this will go to the income statement. And then we're going to have to recognize the depreciation expense. Now we see the cost basis of the truck is 50,000. So we take $50,000 minus the salvage value, which is zero. And then we divide that by 10 years. And so that tells us there's gonna be depreciation of $5,000 a year. Okay, so we have $5,000 that we debit for a depreciation expense, and then we credit accumulated depreciation of $5,000, which will be netted against uh, this, this truck, this asset on our balance sheet. Because remember, it stays on our balance sheet. Now, year two, we get cash again on January 1st, but again, it's unearned. We haven't earned it yet. We're receiving the payments at the beginning of the year, okay? It'd be different if we were getting the payment at the end of the year, but usually the way leases work, you, the payment first payment's made up front, right? So now we've got the unearned revenue. We release it from the unearned revenue at the end of the year, December 31st. We say, okay, now the revenue's been earned. We debit unearned revenue. We credit lease revenue, okay? So again, this 20,000 is gonna go to the income statement, but also going to the income statement will be our depreciation expense, which again is $5,000. Because remember we just said in this example, to make it simple, we're just gonna use straight line depreciation. Now, year three, we're going to debit cash again, and then we're gonna credit unearned lease revenue. You see these entries here, they're exactly the same every year. That's what makes it really nice and simple with it when a lease is categorized as an operating lease from the lessor's perspective. And again, December 31st, 2019, we say, all right, we remove it from unearned lease revenue because now it's been earned. So we've got, we credit lease revenue for 20,000, debit the unearned revenue for 20,000. And then again, we have depreciation expense of $5,000 and accumulated depreciation of 5,000. 
Now, the, the this item, this truck, is going to remain on the balance sheet. And you're actually, even now that the lease is over, so you're not going to be recognizing lease revenue anymore because the three years is up. However, you're going to continue to depreciate the asset for its for its entire economic life. So you still have seven more years of depreciation to record, right? But you're not going to be recording any more lease revenue, at least not related to this particular lease, because this was just a three-year lease, and, and now it's over and done with. 